Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway Beat. The latest from Roundabout Theatre Company is Sons of the Prophet, the new play by Stephen Karam. Under the direction of Peter Dubois, the cast includes Tony Award winner Joanna Gleason and Santino Fontana. We're here on opening night at Valora Pels to celebrate with the company. What happened to the pride you said Bobo felt to live in a country so American it has Lebanon as its center? Center of what? Lebanon, Kansas is the geodetic center of the U.S. You don't know what the... geodetic means. He's a geography buff. I'll explain it to him, anxious, if you stop interrupting me. <laughs> right in the heart of this country, in Kansas, is a town called Lebanon. In the exact center. What are the odds of that? Bobo saw that on a map, knew it was a sign. Obviously, the center of a country is... It's an emotional realm. Mathematically, Wait, there is... who's Bobo? Our grandfather. Circus clown. Don't do that. <laughs> Every week now, Vin, because of this war, let me tell him this, there's thousands of Maronites coming over. No money, mm. starting from scratch. It's like when I was a boy. None of us spoke English, and my brother... We know! I'm telling Vin, he should know something about the man he killed. <laughs> Tell me how you came about to write this play. You know, I, there's, there's no, like... If I were to give you a simple answer, it would be kind of a lie. So the truth is that uh, part of it comes from uh, my real life in terms of drawing on things. I'm half Lebanese. My grandfather was born in Lebanon. as were my oldest aunts and uncles. And, so, uh, uh, but then there are the details that, you know, I grew up across the street from the Dawahi lesbians who are here tonight. Um, so there are those sort of like details where I could create a list that people could say, oh, that's where that came from. But it's never that simple. The other half of it is kind of mysterious. That's sort of just an impulse that comes from questions I'm wrestling with or, or trying to answer. Or in this case, um, uh, you know, I think I just, I think the impulse to write this play was to feel a little bit less alone and sort of hope that, um, you know, the best thing about the theater is it starts in this sort of isolated place and then you end up sharing it with hundreds of people um, and hopefully make other people sort of, you know, by putting some of, some questions you have on stage that maybe it, uh, other people can recognize them, uh, their own struggles or family or questions or... Yeah, it's a very it's a very complicated answer for me. That's so it's you know the first time I read it, I was on I think it was like the B train because I always try to read comedies on subways. It's my test, like to see if I laugh aloud in a public place. So and I was just losing on the train. I was like, this is something I really want to work on. And the families remind me. The family reminds me of my family, people I grew up with, people I knew growing up. So there was something very familiar about it. It's so organic, the whole entire evening. Tell me about the rehearsal process. The rehearsal process was actually very organic. You know, I like to really let the actors work, not over dictate their choices, really see what comes out and just sort of start to then edit it down, you know, into a cohesive whole. And it was really important to me to cast actors who are very natural, very organic in how they perform. And so, that, that was the foundation. And then once you cast those kinds of actors, the director's work becomes that much more exciting. I, I just don't Sorry. like to discuss my personal life in the office. I respect that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, the, the only reason I, I even brought it up is because, and you may have already picked up on the reason Not why. Not really, what is the reason why? Well, Joe, here, here's the... Even if no one is willing to discuss it, much of the publishing industry won't do business with me anymore. Who's not willing to discuss that? I'm saying, Joe, you know where I'm coming from. You're a runner. And with the knee problems you're having, we both know what it's like to be suddenly sidelined. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We both know what it means to be on top and then suddenly fall from grace. Oh, I didn't fall from grace. I think I tore my meniscus. <laughs> 
I did a reading in February or January of 2010 uh, that Carrie Gardner cast at the Roundabout, and uh, I met Peter. Or I met Peter again, but I met Stephen for the first time, and we did a reading and with Joanna and Yusuf, and uh, it just—I had a huge connection to it with the family stuff, especially and the health stuff. I was going through health stuff at the time, so it was, um, you know, it's something that I wanted to help tell its story back in two years ago, almost now. Yeah. Talk about the role and what you love about the play. I love that the play, it's like, terrible things happen and then you have lunch. You know what I mean? That, that, that it's, people are surprised that it's so funny, but the reason it's so funny is because it's so real, because terrible things happen and then you have to move on. You have to find something to do the next day. And this follows somebody who needs to identify what's going on in his life and needs to acknowledge it. And he's just, he's, he's helping everyone else. And I think we all connect with that. And I think it's a, it's a universal play in that, in that sense. We all have been through these experiences. What attracted you to the play, Joanna? The play. I, I rarely get sent plays that move me, make me laugh, and have characters for women like me that are so completely original. And talk about the cast. The cast is spectacular. Santino Fontana was uh, Charles Saccharides and Johnny Dent and Elizabeth McKay and Dean Nelson and Yusuf Bulosh. And I mean, it's, we're a very tight group and we really love each other. So. What can you tell us about the role you play? She's a tragic, hilarious figure, formerly from Manhattan. She has more tragedy in her life than most people, but it's, she's also a little off-center, so she doesn't process things the way people usually do, and ultimately at the end of the play, she, she's quite real, and I find her quite touching. Let's talk about Stephen as a writer. I love his stuff. I saw his first play here at Roundabout. What do you think of him as a writer? I think he's extraordinary. I think for somebody so young, he has a really sensitive ear, and he hears, and he, and he notices, and he's, each character is very, very distinct. I think he's a very talented kid. I grew up here. I can't wait to move to New York. <laughs> I don't know why you'd ever leave. Oh. No offense. Well, no, no. I needed a... Manhattan is fabulous, but it can be... Well, I'm not sure there's anything more invisible in that city than a, a single 60-year-old woman. A single 70-year-old woman? <laughs> It was a wonderful place to grow up. Yeah. Where you're dropped off in the world, it's everything. Location, you know? location, location. Yeah. <laughs> Lebanon suffered for centuries because of its geography. You know, it's at the crossroads of three continents and religions and all these civilizations. Hamas, Hezbollah, whole thing's a mess. Yeah, yeah. No, my grandparents. No one's life should have to be about just finding stability. Yeah, yes, but whose life isn't? Everyone starts life off with a certain number of handicaps. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, God, can you hear what I'm saying? I'm sorry. Oh, don't I'm worry. Sorry. <laughs> Seriously, I, I can hear you. I did not mean to offend you. You didn't. I can't even tell which ear is more misshapen. <laughs> I think the thing that I love about the play most is um, just where it takes you, what it demands of you. It sort of demands that you go to this um, uh, serious and sort of moved part of yourself, but it's also so hilarious, um, which is so real. You know, that's what we do. We laugh to keep ourselves from crying or... Um, and as far as Charles goes, um, I mean, I haven't experienced the grief that he has, but um, I think we're very similar in a lot of ways. Um, and it's, um, it's an honor to um, fight for him, so every night, yeah. I have a Lebanese background, so it immediately spoke to me. I read a version of it totally different from what you what you've saw and what people are watching every night. The first version of it about two and a half, three years ago, totally different play, totally. But nevertheless, there was something about its heart, the, the combination of wit, emotion, that was, I, th I think, unequaled. And the role, please. Let's talk about the role. Talk yeah. about him. Who is he? Who is he? He's a Lebanese guy, still holding on, holding on to, um, you know, to the old ways, to the old country. Not completely comfortable with the new, the new world. You know, so there's a struggle in him. But the most important thing, his nephews 
He loves them with all his heart. Um, I play Timothy, who's a reporter who um, meets the main character, Joseph, and they have, um, uh, they develop a relationship, a uh, very complicated, sort of funny relationship. And uh, what I love about the play is how Stephen captures sort of uh, how weird everything is, how weird and his, his writing is like, is like so strange and funny and real and deep, and but also like hilarious. And it's, uh, I just, there, it's a joy to say the words, you know? It's a joy to like go out there and, you know, be in the, the world that he created, so. That's what I love about the play, I guess, in a nutshell. I want to start traveling. Oh, once do I'm... it. Get out and see the world. Yeah, I don't even have a passport. Please. Get one! No, I know. No, I'm you gonna, you I'm have gonna, to. I'm gonna... I mean, until I went abroad and camped out on a Somalian rooftop, you know? Like, walked along Trajan's Wall. Have you ever been to Moldova? <laughs> no. It's fucking amazing. It's this tiny country next it's to It's in Bulgaria. Eastern Europe. I know where it is. It's shaped like a foot. It's, I guess, yeah. Finances are a little tight now. Oh man, so. I don't come for money. I stayed in hostels starting out. Your dad owns a casino resort. No, Liar. I mean, I, okay, Liar. okay, no, 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 I never relied on that though. And I, I don't travel for me. I, there are so many compelling stories out there that aren't being told and the fact people don't know about them, it, you know, it compounds their suffering. Is that a line from your book? You think I'd quote my no, own book? No, I'm just book? teasing. It is a line from my book. I'm taking it out. Oh, no, you don't have to. No, I'm, I'm only writing it because I, I do think bearing witness, it gives people's pain life, validity. Maybe it gives you validity.